So what we're going to do now is I'm going to prove to you, I'm not just going to show you, I'm going to prove to you the relationship that the gradients of these perpendicular lines has. Now, um, before, just now, I said imagine each one of these units, these um, squares, sorry, was one unit. Okay, that's fine. You can imagine that, you'll get a concrete example. But as a mathematician, and as mathematicians, we want to do a little better than that. We don't want to just prove this thing about perpendicular lines for this example. We want to do it for anything. So I now want you to imagine that those uh, grid lines, they're not there, right? So you don't know any of these distances. That's just some point somewhere off there. It could be one unit away, it could be 100 units away. My point is it could be anywhere, okay? Just imagine that. I'm just gonna put the grid lines back for now because you guys have grid lines and also it'll help us do the constructions I'm about to show you. So let me just change that back. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Have you got that triangle there? That triangle? Yeah. We're gonna label some stuff on this triangle. Now, this point A, I'm trying to suggest that it's anywhere. It could be anywhere. So I can't say, even though it looks like it, that it's at two comma four because that locks it in position at one particular spot. So instead of saying two comma four, I'm just gonna say, well, let's use algebra because algebra is the kind of mathematics that lets us deal with numbers when you don't know what they are, okay? This will become really powerful for us in a minute. So I'm just gonna call its x coordinate P and I'm gonna call its y coordinate Q. They're just names, they're just labels. I can call them anything I want. I could have called them, you know, uh, Jennifer and Kate or Andrew and Nathan, not that I would, but anyway, they're just labels temporarily. Now, help me here. Yeah, no, you're right, it wouldn't work. That's why I didn't do it. Now, let's look at the uh, x coordinate for a second. If the x coordinate is P, then that distance P is somewhere on this triangle. My question to you is, where on the triangle is it? How would you describe it verbally? Without like pointing and saying it's there, what words would you use to tell me where on the triangle P is? Anyone? <coughs> Any takers? Yeah, Reed, what do you reckon? The base. Okay, I think the base, that's uh, this guy down here. I think that's perfect. Do you see that right there? This distance here, has to be equal to P. That's what makes it the coordinate, the X coordinate, P. You've moved P units to the right. So on the triangle, the base is P. This is right angle, by the way. And that means if you think about the Y coordinate, Q, Y is about up and down, isn't it? So where's Q? It's the, yeah, it's the vertical side, right? I saw some of you doing it with your hands. So that's this guy over here. That's Q. Okay. Now this is important because I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing here and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to make a, um, a congruent triangle. Remember what congruent means? It's not just like, yeah. it's not just a like, it's exactly the same. Okay, now don't draw this just yet. I've got my, um, it's the same triangle there, can you see it? Just sitting on top. Right? I've got the same triangle. Watch what I'm going to do with it. I want to think about perpendicular lines. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle, still the same triangle, and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so watch me do that. I'm going to spin it around and it's gonna sit there. Do you see what I've done? Do, did you watch me rotate it? It's the same triangle, just in a different spot and oriented differently. Can you draw this triangle, please? In the second quadrant, can you draw this one? But I've got my parallel lines. Um, can you rub your parallel line out? If you used pen, then next time use pencil Whoa. and maybe just draw one underneath that has this. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to catch up. Draw your congruent triangle over there. What is it? Oh, that'd be. If it goes up now, it's not. Uh, I'm turning off my Wi Fi right now. <laughs> I think it needs both. I think it needs both. I think you need both. Oh, no, yeah, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So it's okay if you're not quite finished yet, but most of you are. So now I want us to help us understand 
this triangle over here because it's the key, all right? Do you remember how you told me on the first triangle about where P and Q were, right? So P and Q were on the original triangle. That means P and Q are on the new congruent triangle because all the lengths are the same. Can someone tell me where P is? On the same side. It's, um, it's this guy here, isn't it? Because it used to be down here, but I rotated the whole thing. So now this length, whoops, see daisy. That length there is P. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, good. By the same token, with that right angle over there, you can tell me that Q is... It's the horizontal length, right? You can't say straight because they're all straight, right? So uh, that guy there is Q, right? Same triangle, just moved over. Stay with me, you turn. Okay, now... The most important point is the one that I've labeled with that big fat dot, okay? Since we called the first one capital A, let's call this one capital B. Now, help me work out, on the basis of what you've told me about this triangle, what are the coordinates? Let's do the X one first. Horizontally, where am I? Q. Q. Now, this length is Q, but the coordinate is not Q. Because look, Aren't I going to the left? Aren't I in this oh, quadrant nice. over here? So in fact, it's negative Q, isn't it? Negative Q. Okay. That's the x-coordinate. What about the y-coordinate? Now, have a look. It's above the axis. Vertically, you had to go up. So that means it's, it's just positive P. Okay, 